And welcome to Truth, Beer, and Consequences Point Five Bonus After Episode. Dark. It's yours truly, Marco and Julia, of course. Yeah. And then uh, now this is not a first time guest, so yes. we will introduce a Jason from Higher Gravity. Welcome, Jason, to welcome the pod. Welcome back. Hey, thanks. Yeah, for yeah welcome back. back. Yeah, absolutely. We. Absolutely. Cannot thank you enough for letting us record at your space. Of course. This has been fantastic. The beers, so many different beers to always select from is always fun. Right. I know that we had a couple other people say you can record at this brewery, this brewery, which we want to do still. Yeah. I mean, that's that's not out of the question. No, but having, what, 400 some odd beers to pick from every Tuesday? Yeah. I mean, you can't beat that. You 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 keep saying you're going to find another location it's almost like every no. week we'll, we may not be back next week and it always seems like you you come back we so something thing, something yeah. must be going okay or you just like how close it is you're to your doing work something your house. right I don't know. ish yeah <laughs> all the above yeah all I mean, the above uh, this just this felt right felt good Absolutely. and i appreciate uh you being a uh, gracious uh host and you know welcoming us and you know there, there's well, and all your staff, too. Like, everyone here oh, yeah. I mean, has always been incredibly every, accommodating, helpful, yeah. beyond friendly. So whatever you guys are doing, you're doing it right. Well, yeah. so, so our staff makes up for the fact that this isn't an old Buddy Rogers music store. Mm-hmm. And the acoustics <laughs> may not be great, but the staff are okay then. They're, they're, oh, they're yeah. decent. They're yeah. decent. Yeah. Staff's great. Yeah. But, oh, God, yeah. No, but the, I'm just this, glad you got rid of that Marco guy. He just... Well, they I don't didn't, know. He brought I'm the, still I, on the... <laughs> Oh, that's like, right. You I are still, still I'm still on the roster. I can still see the schedule. I can pick you up if someone... You saved the day for, uh, for Oktoberfest here. That was awesome. You saved that the day. That was fun. That was so cool. I want to hear about that. I want to hear about a lot about Beer Event because we are oh, getting you, really, but really But do you want to start on Oktoberfest? It's I, an it's an unfortunate event. term it's, in yes. business where you call it postmortem, but you talk about something that happened and as a recap, right? Yeah. So Fretboard hosted. Is this this was the first Oktoberfest that Summit Park did, wasn't it? it well, Ish? so so in it, it's it's a long story, and I don't okay. know if you guys got into it because, like I said, I I didn't get through the whole episode with Jim last week. We did not. We did not. We did not. So you guys. So didn't this go is all you. It. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was a little bit of a weird circumstance where. Um, the city of Blue Ash just didn't know if they were going to be able to make the event work in mm-hmm. time. So they weren't really pushing it a whole lot. So, I, I mean, I had quite a few people that came out that were like, we didn't even know this was going on kind of thing. And then towards the end, um, one of the questions was, well, you know, we're so wait, late in the game. Do we really call this an Oktoberfest? Uh, because, we, ha- I mean, we had some German beer there. We had uh, a German band for a little bit but that was kind of it it wasn't your traditional ger- german. german music all night yeah, all yeah, day. yeah. there, yeah, there yeah. wasn't german food everywhere and all that kind of stuff we had some food trucks and none of them were german focused at all um but you had food here which is more important than there was food anything yeah. there was food yeah. there was beer there was a band it was Hell great yeah. Hell yeah. um and honestly we we didn't know what to expect because it was the first time that blue ash put on anything like this mm-hmm. and now they do red white and blue ash and that's a known thing they know what to expect from that because it's one of the biggest events in the city yeah uh so it's not like the the city and the events team here doesn't know how to handle crowds like that we just didn't know who was going to come out because it was the first time we've done an event like this and then uh so we are going to do it next year nice uh without getting into any details because i don't want to have any spoilers yeah it's it's going to be a bigger event next year oh Uh, yeah and there will be some higher gravity stuff uh, paired with that. I don't so were say. you guys able to, what I'm curious about, and again, this is one that I don't know if that bleeds into you telling too much. Were you, because I wasn't able to make it up because we were at Big Sis all day. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that you guys helped Fretboard out, who was the sponsor for Oktoberfest. Were you able to do anything as higher gravity out in the park or just here, and is that something that could change to where there's a somehow a higher gravity tent, jockey box, that kind of thing? We do have a year. tent now. I bought a tent. Nice. It, it didn't come in time for October. Gotcha. Fest, okay. But okay. we do have our own tent, so nice. okay. um, you we're we will be doing a lot more events out in the park. Nice. Uh, one of the things that event did for us was. Um, basically allowed us to show the city that we can handle an event like that uh that was our first time being involved in a city event um so that 
overall was a great experience. And honestly, for the amount of time that the city and fretboard and us put into advertising, which was almost none, we had a huge turnout. That's and the, awesome. the weather ended up uh, kind of breaking and it got really windy and cold really fast as soon as the sun went down. So we were getting crushed with people. And then as soon as that sun went down and the wind started picking up, the event kind Everything of died off a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if that had, had kept going the way that it was, it was going to be a pretty big event, even though it was not something that we really leaned into, for lack of a better term. Okay. I hate saying everyone says leaned in. But um, but it is what it is. It, it's accurate. It is it's, what it is. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one next year. Business the, buzzword sort of thing. Yes. It's one of those things when you're on a conference call and you're all, you and all your friends are sitting behind the scenes. Like anytime they say leaned in, take a drink kind of thing. That's so awesome. I love, that. yeah. uh, I love it. Ours for, uh, so I used to work at a, an accounting firm. And uh, the last couple years that I was there, the big word was penetrate. They wanted to penetrate the market. Ah, I love uh, penetration. That's, um, it's so good. Anytime I mean, somebody penetrated, you had to drink. Yes, love that. That's yeah. a, speaking of drinking, Marco, your glass is empty. I was going to say we're all drinking oh. about the same thing, but you, you need to get something else. I'm a little bit of an yeah. overachiever. Uh, okay, I will. You want to take a real quick break? and I'll, I'll get something else. I mean, okay. if you guys got. We'll keep going. Yeah, you, we'll just keep going. Yeah, you All right. keep going. So, so next year, I, without getting into too many details, because yeah, yeah. there's a lot of things we still need to figure out. But next year, it will be a bigger event. Mm -hmm. It'll probably start a little earlier, and it'll be focused around beer, but not necessarily Oktoberfest. Okay, specifically. Okay. So, uh, it'll be there. It won't be October. There's so many Oktoberfests there around are. town now. It's it's hard to compete with that. And honestly. One of the things that we did with it was had it more towards the end of October, uh, or I guess it was mid-October, where you know you're several weeks past the city of Cincinnati's October fest. Yeah, so the yeah. the big one, and for a lot of people, and this year didn't seem quite as bad. But usually in the past, uh, what we saw with Oktoberfest beers is that once Cincinnati's Oktoberfest happened, nobody Sales just nobody gave a shit about Oktoberfest in Cincinnati anymore. Gotcha. But, but this year, I don't know if it's because the last couple of years, we didn't get an Oktoberfest. Mm -hmm. People just kept wanting to drink Oktoberfest. And I mean, the real one in Munich doesn't end right on September 18th, like the exactly. one in Cincinnati yeah, does yeah. or whatever that date Cincinnati is. Cincinnati so. has kind of that hard cutoff date or it feels like yep. it. And it's like, no, nah, that's not really right. how the rest of the world, or at least like you said, Munich does it. So I know that for, and again, let me know if this is towing any lines. I know that for Red, White, and Blue Ash, there were some licensing or um, there were some things to where higher gravity couldn't sell in the park because Fretboard already had that well, and kind I, of ta I don't, taken. I don't, I, don't wanna... know, I don't know the right wording. But I'm just curious if you can say if for like next year's Oktoberfest, if it's going to be more open to other they're, they're, beer vendors right. like higher gravity, like other... Higher gravity will be out there for next thing. next okay. year's brew ash i won't nice. say Oktoberfest, so we'll okay. we'll, okay. we'll be out there for that nice uh awesome. there will be a good selection of many different breweries out there nice uh so that is one of the big changes that'll be there and but and, and then as far as red white and blue ash goes the the laws around doing events mm -hmm. in ohio and just laws around alcohol in ohio in general and pretty much any state are so backwards they're weird it's insane so yeah so yeah. we we won't be doing anything out there during red white and blue ash mm -hmm. because of the way things have to function through a distributor and okay. then through a not-for-profit okay. uh without going into details sure. of that it's just not something that we can do and that the city um wants to dive into because it's it it gets complex and it doesn't need to be for an event like that but That's now Bre yeah. brew ash will be focused more on beer so being able to get that many different beers in there is worth the hassle so to speak makes sense yeah oh that's so, cool that's awesome is there any way that you as this business could have a draft trailer out there with yes. just your stuff yes well and, and by just our stuff, like obviously, well, that, it's the stuff that you you bring in that and, we sell, correct? Yeah, yes. that you sell. Yes, there's a way to do it, and that was a cool thing that we figured out with Brew Ashes. We figured out how to do that 
legally, mm-hmm. which it can be done. It's you're just, not a distributor. We're not a distributor. You're distrib- not a brewery. Correct. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, okay. and breweries cannot sell their own beer out of events like that. It has to go right. through a distributor or a retailer. Right, right, right. right. Uh, and to be a retailer, you have to have a certain be license. Dope. And yeah. the other thing is those draft trailers that, that you rent, number one, they're very, very price friendly they're so badass they're like and it's really they cool. are yeah. so cool yeah. like they are they pour so great and the only thing you have to worry about is the trough like where's the trough go and where does it lead into but they they pour amazing yeah they are they are they are on point yeah i i mean i was impressed with that because we've done events before with jockey boxes and stuff and if the keg's not cold and you're pouring through yeah a jockey box that doesn't have at least a hundred foot line set uh, it, you're going to get so much foam and then you're rough. pouring into pitchers and Correct. it's not a good yes. experience for the customer. It's not a good experience for the volunteers that run the booths and that kind of stuff. But those, yeah, those trailers are awesome. Uh, and I've used them before as a volunteer at event like 10, 15 years ago. Uh, but I've never actually been somebody out there running one before brew ash and helping, yeah. helping out with all that kind of stuff. And that was, it was cool to get to see the inside of that. And I'm, someone who likes to tinker with things so being able to see all that and how it's put together was was a fun experience yeah but you yeah. do nice yeah you nice. do nice speaking of beers you just got back with a full glass yeah it's just another um, uh i have a bit burger uh, nice. but Good uh, i did warn uh lydia that um uh, very soon it is uh, tequila, tequila tuesday. tuesday oh no yeah, it's happening. Or are you going to make me one of your world All the way margaritas? around. Oh, you want me to make a margarita? You, you say you make the best. They, so I, I make I, good margaritas. So I, I, need to, yeah. I need to know if you're bullshitting me or not. Okay. Yeah. So, sure. But I have, from Little Fish, their Wet Hop IPA. Very, very good. Darker than yeah, what good. you would uh, think, it, but it tastes it was, it's, it's it was good. good yeah. It went down smooth. I mean. Yeah, so. absolutely. And Jason, I know that you have... A little bit of that left, but you also have. I've got everything another. Athens on the table right now. I nice. uh, poured a Jackie O's primary, which is a mixed firm beer, and then uh, Julia and Marco were like, "Oh, I thought we were drinking the wet hopped, and we were all going to drink it together." Yeah, so and I poured like, a wet hop too. So I'm kind of double fisting, but everything's from the awesome. same city, so we're yeah. good. Nice, excellent, good uh, beers all around. So, but yes. Um, I do. Hang on. Before, I, I don't know where you're going. but No, no, no. Go ahead. Where this started like 10 minutes ago was Marco saving the day. So at 15 at, minutes ago. Was it 15 minutes ago? Okay. Um, thanks for keeping yes. count. I, I just looked over at the time <laughs> stamp. It's right there. So it, yes, Marco saving the day at Oktoberfest. It, it was. So, so we, we had, me and Nick had a communication error oh, no. uh, where, you know, I was setting up the event for brew ash and then we had our normal saturday schedule Mm -hmm. so nick had texted me and was like do you think we need another person uh or is two people good when he said two people he meant there were two people period period on saturday not like together at the same time gotcha two bartenders for the entire day and i was like yeah two people is needed and so he took that as like, oh, you, we're, we're good with just one person during the day. And then so I got the event set up and then we had an extra 10,000 people in the park that were not, that's not a normal, that's right, not a normal right. Saturday in the park. But we had that and I kept getting messages from Todd, who's an awesome bartender. Oh, he's but, great. Yeah, uh, He yeah. just kept texting me like we're losing money or SOS or whatever. And so I was kind of running back and forth. Mm-hmm. I would come in, drop a couple of things off clear we had a line out the door so i would like clear through the line with him and then i'd go back to to brew ash um and then a half hour later i'd be getting another text from todd like hey by the way um and also the power had gone out to the entire building during the day too so we were dealing with the power out that yeah dealing with the power out it was also like we're in ohio state bar uh the the fans drink plenty of miller light and they earn their flag Mm -hmm. up here so yeah um we're in ohio state bar the game was starting at like four o'clock or three oh, o'clock or something so like that. All that so too. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're, we're dealing with a lot of stuff going on all at once. And then the miscommunication with Nick. So anyways, like we have a messaging app with our team mm-hmm. and we just send out messages like, Hey, is anyone around that can cover a shift? Um, and um, Marco was like, yeah, here I'll, I'll be there. And it was awesome. Like, I, yeah. I don't know how much later it was, but Marco was just, in here the next time I popped in to try and help out. So it's, it's nice to, uh, have 
that level of support, even though Marco's, you know, moved on. He didn't want to work here anymore. And, <laughs> Uh, but he's still willing to true. <laughs> he's still uh, willing we, to help we out. It. It's true we and untrue uh, to to both. Um, mm -hmm. I'm I'm happy to work here, uh, but I have moved on. But I'm still happy to work here, and I think that uh, you know, I, if if I can, I I think you know this. I, I in the communication I had with Nick when I told him that I was taking the new job. It was, hey, can you still be on the roster and pick up a shift here and there? I said, yes, absolutely. And so that's my, um, that's the way I, I go about it. And if I can help, I, I'm happy to help. And uh, honestly, I, I pour beer here more than I pour at the place that I work full time at. Uh, that is going to change probably in the next week or two as I have a lot of uh, bartenders off for personal days for, for reasons. Uh, so I'm uh, going to get uh, behind the bar. And it, it's, you know, anyway. But um, i happy to have done it. Uh, and uh, it, it was busy, man. It was a, it was a trip. It, it was fun. And it's... Um, it, it it was it was a great time and you know so uh i think it turned out to be a good event I, I i don't know i mean the time i was here was really busy really fun and uh i usually hang out for a beer but i honestly thought once adam said yeah you're good you can go and and it was it was truly like everybody had been served everybody was cool Everybody was good. Seemed like everybody was maybe settled and maybe going to do their own thing. Adam's like, good. And I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm going to go because I think I, I might get re-wrapped up back into this. And so I, I told Adam, hey, see ya. That was that was probably a smart move. Although, like, like I had said, it was, it was slowing down outside because it was getting so cold and so windy. Uh, that I was able to bounce back moving. in, but but yeah. yeah, at that point. But I mean, that is that is the fun thing. I don't bartend a whole lot personally anymore. We've got a pretty good staff, and I would rather let our staff make their money. That's that's their livelihood. Mm -hmm. That's the way. Um, I, that's the way I approach it as, yep. as a tap room manager. Is like, I'm not getting behind the bar if I can give you these hours. Right. Uh, that I totally uh, approach that the same way. Yeah, and I do I do love being back there. One of the things that I miss about doing it this way, but we make a commitment to our staff to give them X amount of hours and make sure that they have enough money to be financially stable and be able to do whatever they want to do in their personal lives. But I often miss that personal connection. And, you know, if it's, if it's a slow day at the bar and you've only got a few people in there, it's awesome to get to connect and have the time to talk to customers. Mm -hmm. But I also really like it when it's just like slammed busy because you'll be there for four hours and you won't even know it. Notice you're just, it, yeah. You're, yeah. you're moving around way too much and you're interacting with too many people. Um, and, and that four hours goes by and you're just like drenched in sweat. And um, it's, it's like a good workout, good time hanging out with people. You, you still get that interaction. It's maybe not quite as uh, personable and you can't get, as deep in the conversation sure. with people, you're still, but you're still having a good right. time yeah, with all the yeah. customers. And, and so, what's yeah. weird about where I'm at is uh, we make more uh, gimlets and uh, Manhattans uh, than I'm making old fashions. Like over here, I would just be, be like an old fashioned factory. Uh, on some nights, you just you 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 get the people in like that's their that's their jam, that's their deal. Uh, but I was like a gimlet. I had never heard, heard of a fucking gimlet and then uh, i you know need to get into gimlet and you know make it or whatever but uh uh margaritas and you know um at highballs whatever i mean you know it is what it is you you just make it but but yeah there's a, there's a little bit of a different cocktail crowd where i'm at let's say yeah i mean i don't claim to be a real bartender i'm pretty good at pouring beer and i know a lot about making beer as well but um i always joke when people order cocktails and stuff i'm like i i don't know what i'm doing i pour beer i i know enough and i really like margaritas a lot so i do make a good margarita we're gonna um, uh, we're gonna and, test, yeah. we're gonna test yeah. the, theory. If, yeah. the thing is if you do it enough 
as long as you have a recipe, you can shake anything, you can make anything. That's mm -hmm. not a problem. I just don't memorize cocktail recipes because I don't do it enough. Yeah. Um, but I don't know what the fuck a gimlet is. <laughs> oh, you don't? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure well, there's well, a recipe behind the bar for you if someone asks for one. A gimlet? No, not at know. our bar. Okay. No, I, right. no, there's not. I'll call okay. a, I'll okay. call up Marco next time. Be like, yeah. Yeah. So no, comes there, up. there is one at uh, my bar, uh, gimlet. It doesn't sound appetizing. It's 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 silly. What's what's in it? You're gonna put them on. The spot. I know. I am putting them on. <laughs> the spot. The spot. He'll be like. I think uh, this is a. Uh, what what alcohol do you think's in it? It sounds like uh, I, I want to say it's like it's got to be gin, right? Apple pucker. You think it, yeah. gin and so apple pucker? We're making maybe a not maybe not gin. Oh god. Gin. We're gonna apple die. pucker and um, simple syrup. So, yeah, definitely make, make it even a more sweet. Couple, couple yeah, cherries. Yeah. It's a, so it. it's a gin and tonic cocktail. So I was right, right. about gin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. What else is in it besides gin? And th so is a gimlet just a gin and tonic? I'm gonna scroll down. Where <laughs> I He's looking for like the perfect one that has a description. But there's a very specific. It, a gimlet is made with. So it's uh, gin, uh, lime, and simple syrup. That's it. That's it. All right. You're, so we're adding more sugar to the tonic. Yes. Oof. Yes. Yeah. So we got. It's uh, a diabetes cocktail. I like it. Like, here you go. I like it. It's gym wine, in simple syrup. All Gim right. Gim it. Uh, I'll remember gimlet. <laughs> next time somebody Lime. orders it, I'll know how to make it. There you go. Right. There you go. It's gimlet. Oh, and it's got to be in one of those glasses, too? Well, we don't it's have in, those it's glasses, in a chalice. but it's in one of those... Uh, it's like a half chalice. It's like a yeah, champagne, uh, not what flute. It, what is no, that like, glass uh, called where it was, uh, like, the legend is it's in the shape of the breast of uh, some oh, English lady yeah. or some shit? It's a gimlet glass. Is it a gimlet glass? Oh, I don't think God, no. Come on. <laughs> it's our truth. A gimlet glass is, yeah. is, a, is a boob, basically. Yes. Yeah. We'll go with it. It's a boob. So moving from Love boobs. moving on from a couple events, Red, White, and Blue Ash and Oktoberfest to my favorite event of the entire year. Beer, beer booze, vent. and bonks. Oh. Okay, another one of my favorite events. Oh, okay. Beer vent. What's well, a month long yeah. event? It is. Yeah. It's a long ass event. I absolutely love it. I am sad I didn't know about it like the first year or two. I think I came in either year two or year three. Like I miss at least the first one. It's Not only sure been. How. I think we've only done it. So we've only been open for five years. Right. And uh, we didn't do it the first year. Don't we, say only. I mean, be we didn't, proud of the fact yeah, that you yeah. I have. I, I am hell really yeah. proud. Yeah. That we've I know been you open are. For five years, especially like ha almost half of that being COVID years. True. Um. So so no. I, I take away the only. We've been open for five years. We didn't do it the first year because we didn't have our shit together. And this is a process. Oh, God, um, yeah. Yeah, just, so, just so what we, you've mentioned to me just in general conversation. It's holy crap. So do you want to talk a little bit about what goes into what well, Can we start with the history yeah, first? Yeah, yeah. And how it how happened, it how you, how you uh, came about it, and then, you know, uh, fast forward to present day. I mean, start, uh, start at the beginning. How did it start? Yeah, I mean, the, a, a lot of things around here start with Nick being like, oh, you know what, it would be a good idea. And then uh, then I kind of took it. I, I really liked that idea, and I took it and, and ran with a lot of it. Uh, and so the idea being? The a, idea being like a beer uh, advent calendar. And yeah. at, the, at the time, like, they're, they existed. It wasn't, you didn't just go to Aldi and pick up your your advent calendar or go to costco they were not just out on shelves mm -hmm. at the time when we started talking about it so we started talking about it by the way i'm not gonna knock those but uh that's not your calendar i it, mean no you, i i agree no, they, no, i mean they, they serve a purpose they're right there on the sure, shelf you can sure. just grab them i've seen what beers are in those and it's fine but it's, if you're they're not it, this is uh, if you are familiar with those calendars or have just been made aware of those calendar. This calendar is the one you should get. Absolutely. Oh, I, I mean, I 100% agree. I, and we can talk about how much time and effort we yeah. put into it, how much of... Which I'd like to because I don't yeah. think that people realize, like you just said, how much actually just time, not even the physical labor of building and putting together the boxes, but the time to... 
plan for it and reach out to breweries and try to figure out what to do. Correct. For sure. Yeah. But yeah. in the early stages, mm -hmm. uh, Nick says, this would be cool. And you're like, And you sighed yeah. and went, oh, God, here's another Nick Good idea. idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was a, yeah, I really like that idea. That's and cool. we tried to figure it out the first year that we were open, but we couldn't find a box manufacturer who at the time would, because our first year, I think we did 80 boxes, uh, which nobody in their right mind in like the cardboard industry wants to fuck around with 80, 80 right, boxes. It's right. not worth their time or they're going to charge 50 bucks a box for the cardboard. So we couldn't find anyone that would do it for us. Um, we did find somebody eventually, but by then it was too late for us to try and do it. Um, so we, we didn't get it going that first year, but at that time, Nick was, um, he was actually still living in Chicago when he had the idea. And there was a, a place in Chicago called Bitter Pops, which is awesome. Uh, and their laws are a little weird in Chicago around the retail shop versus the bar. So it's similar to us, but it kind of functions a little bit differently because of the way they have to have their space separated. But anyways, Bitter Pops was a, a, a bar and bottle shop that was right by Nick's house in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and they would they would do it and they sold a ton of them. Now it was not quite as polished. It was just a case box that was just stuffed with all the beers and they had some kind of topping over it, or maybe they mm -hmm. were individually wrapped. And so you saw all of them from the open top box, mm -hmm. but they were wrapped. So you didn't necessarily were wrapped, so you know didn't what you were them. getting. So, something right, right. I can't remember exactly what it was, but they, they were selling a ton of them. Um, and Nick had seen them. I don't think he ever bought one. But that was one of the few places that was doing it. So it wasn't a complete new idea, but it was like, hey, I saw something like mm -hmm. this. Uh, or, you know, I used to love the chocolate that you would get every day, but I don't want chocolate anymore. I want beer. Um, and so then we, we started doing it. And the next year uh, was the first year we did it. Uh, and I think I've talked about this before on another podcast, mm -hmm. but we designed the box completely wrong. So we, uh, we sold 80 of them in the first year. Um, and it took four, three or four of us, like 14 hours Good to Lord. stock eight, or to pack 80 of them. Um, and the way the box was designed, it was all in one piece and you had to glue the edges down. So every, every box you'd, you'd fill it all with the beers and then you'd have to have a hot glue gun out and glue gun oh, the sides Lord. and then hold them in for a little bit. And it was, a fucking oh, my God. by the way, some breweries used to do that for, um, uh, their, uh, beer cases and uh, some wineries uh did that for their wine cases oh really not just speaking same. from experience and not speaking from no, no. experience and never pissing at all so if, if, if that was our option for the box we would not still do it so we yeah. completely re redesigned the box the next time to have a drop on lid um and that was a complete game changer um and I think the next year we did maybe 120 of them. Mm -hmm. and, and then last year we, we sold about 600 of them. That's awesome. So What's it, the number this year? Seven? Uh, we, we left it at 600 left again at six? this okay. year. Okay. So, um, and they are still on sale. So you can get them on our website. Higher so there's at least one more box there's available. There's at least one more. They, they are, they're moving. So if you're going to get them, get them now. What, yes. what, what usually happens, so we, and, and we'll get into this more, but we start, selling these in in july because that's when i start planning what goes into them that's when i'm starting to talk to the breweries distributors about what can go into this that's when i'm uh working on the design because we change the design of the box not the shape of it or the the style bigger of it, but, bigger holes to uh, bigger. not bigger holes we we, no, we love the smalls no. um, <laughs> holes, holes stay the same we like to keep them tight keep, so keep it tight you really gotta tight, shove it real in there. tight yeah. yep yeah. you know you uh, might have to use like an instrument to really get down in there anyway yeah. anyway <laughs> but we like to change the artwork a little bit so sure. we start on the design back back in july so we sell them in july because that helps us to plan numbers that helps us make sure we're going to sell enough so we when we go talk to these breweries we're not brewing way too much right of the right. special beers that go into it but um so it it'll start back then and then um really from there uh you know a lot of it is working with all the breweries figuring out what we're going to put in there designing my entire list mm -hmm. of beers that we're going to do and because you design it down to what beer goes in what day this correct, isn't just correct. okay we have 25 beers eh, this here this here this here there is an actual plan 
in place, or at least I was for with sure. him for yeah. certain days. Maybe not every single day, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Certain yeah. key so, days you're going to want. Well, but there's there's certain days that we I plan s- for it. Uh, but but so anyways, we we start doing it then so mm-hmm. we can figure out numbers. And then from there, like all these boxes start to get, I have to put in the box order way ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Um, And and kind of, uh, I don't even know where I was going with the original talk track. Just just the amount of time that goes into it. Like it starts with, okay, for the the 2022 beer vent box in July, we start placing orders. And in July, we're also. Are you also oh, placing the box thank, orders and all no, that? No, thank you. So this, yeah, yeah. this is this is where I was trying to work into this. And we're very good at rabbit holes here. I get I get distracted so easy. So we we went down a rabbit hole that I was not trying to get into just yet. But um, so so when we uh, do all of the sales, like fifty percent of our sales happen in July during a That's pre awesome. during a pre sale. Yeah, yeah. And that g- gives us an idea of where we're going. And then August, September happens, and there's not a whole lot of, of sales trickling in. Mm-hmm. So it's a very slow trickle. Mm-hmm. October, that starts to pick up a little bit. And then the first couple of weeks in November, things start moving really, People really are going, fast. Oh, shit, I need um, to. Get and in on the this past, now. we've always put these calendars out the week after Thanksgiving. And mm-hmm. the reason that we were doing that was to try and get everyone the freshest beer possible Mm -hmm. because a lot of the special beers that are brewed and the beers that are ordered in through distribution we're looking at hey when are those going to be canned when are they going to come through distribution and you know i don't want it if it's a month ago right Uh, especially if it's a beer that you've planned for that last week of december right right. then you're looking at two two and a half month old beer that's sitting on someone's counter because not a lot of people have right. the refrigerator space for So, it. but this year we moved it up a little bit because mm-hmm. last year one of the biggest complaints that we had, not that it was much of a complaint, but people were Constructive like... Constructive criticism. I don't even know, I don't even yeah. know what you call it that, but people yeah. were like, hey, I'm going to Thanksgiving. I'm going to see all my family out of town. I want to get these as gifts. And if you don't pack gotcha. it until after Thanksgiving, yeah. they're not going to have it in time that. for Christmas. Makes sense. Um, so we moved it forward because we had enough people saying that, mm-hmm. uh, that we were like, you know what? We can sacrifice a little bit of freshness. Now, none of these are going to be more than three months old by the right. time December 25th ro- rolls sure. around. Um, but we're packing them a little early so that we can get them in people's hands so they can bring them for gifts on Thanksgiving. Sounds awesome. Um, so so a lot of those sales are picking up now, and it's a little bit, it feels a little awkward to me because now normally sales are just now picking up. Mm-hmm. We're packing these things on Monday, which is November oh, 7th, wow. and we're not sold out yet. So for me, I'm like internally freaking out because we haven't sold them. Right. Normally sales aren't like really red hot until mid-November, and that mid-November, they're, wow, this, they're gone. But Wow, yeah. So that's, so you're actually gonna cut off before your original uh, or no so this year's kind of backwards normally they're all sold before we pack them yeah we're gonna be packing them and sales are still gonna be going maybe going yeah. unless we sell out this weekend which is possible i hope so um hope but wow but probably more likely is they'll be still selling Oh, you'll, After, you'll, you'll pack them all and still just hold them for anyone who's ready. The, uh, yeah. yeah, because, I mean, it's still going to be another week before they start. We, sure. we start handing them out to people yeah, yeah, yeah. once they're gotcha. all separated gotcha. in, in both stores and all that kind of stuff. So they'll probably be sold out before you can come pick them up. Um, but but normally, yeah, normally we wouldn't start packing until November 25th. And they're all they've all been long gone. No, by but that that that. That, that makes sense, though. I mean, right. you, it, total sense. Do you want me to make them right sure. now? Yeah, sure. Is Marco having a margarita? Lydia is ready to go with my tequila order. She's okay. ready. Oh, so you're just getting straight tequila? Straight tequila. Okay. okay. So you want a margarita? I would like that. I'll yeah. make you a margarita. Yeah, thank you. Julia doesn't Bring believe that I can make a margarita. I never, I never no. said that. Well, no, down. actually, I think I did say that. I, I think she is she down. All right, we are back, and hey. believe it or not, I have another drink. Yeah, it's, let's go. It's, it's incredibly impressive. Um, this is a world-class margarita made by the one and only Jason, and it's damn good. Hell yeah. Provided I don't spill half of it, like I tend to do anymore with 
higher class beverages that I have here at Higher Gravity. She didn't think I could do it, but... I had faith no, in you. No, 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 no. It's, it's not that she not, It's not that. It she was. wanted, uh, as much as you bragged, she wanted to have it. Yes. As much as I bragged, she texted yeah. me and was like, Annie's margarita is the best. And all and I you said, said was, was, I make no. a good margarita too. And so I said, okay. I didn't even say like, like mine's better than Annie. I said, I also make a good margarita. All right. And I've wanted to, to try a margarita that you make. Yeah. And it's delicious. Absolutely delicious. So are you having a margarita as well? I'm doing the same thing, yeah. Excellent. And then Mark is just doing... Terramana Reposado. Reposado. Uh, a little lime uh, and salt. salt. It's uh, delicious. He may it's, be singing by the end of this bonus. We Could, happen. Yeah, Could I, happen. I haven't been here for that. I, I, um, I usually don't drink a whole lot of liquor, but I do love margaritas. My problem is, and I'm, you'll, you'll see my hands in my pockets while we're here with this right now. You start but talking more with your hands. No, 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 no. no. With... with Liquor, I drink at the same speed oh, as. as I drink beer, and obviously that They're doesn't not go same. well. So no, no, I, no. I purposely have been for the past like six months or so trying to set my drink down and slide it away or put my hands in That's my fair. pocket That's while fair. I'm drinking any kind of liquor drink because otherwise I just I'm one of those people. It's just if it's in my hand, I'm just going to be constantly sipping. Yeah, and I sure. can't do that. That but That's otherwise. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Pro tip so, from Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Pro tip from Jason: Don't be an alcoholic. Put, <laughs> put your drink down. Put your drink down. Wait at least a couple beats before you go in for another one. Alcohol is so, good to meetings, Jason. Uh, don't be a irresponsible drinker. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I so, can walk home from here if I need to. So yeah. This is yeah. true. Are they? I could too. It just take me longer. All right. So beer fest. Uh, so we talked about. This is so delicious, by the way. The margarita. Way to go, fantastic. Jason. Uh, actually, uh, I, didn't I just want to call out uh, Lydia, bartender one, yeah. um, Lydia. Hell yeah. Uh, wonderful. She's done work. a hell of a job producing for us tonight. Yeah. Producer Lydia. Wonderful job. Yep. Uh, so yeah. what are, so we, talk, are we, we on? Talk, uh, we were talking about like the beer vent boxes and how yeah. you guys used to have to build them, but now the the cardboard box company i don't know if that's i don't know what the official term we, is we, but we they're are, going to be assembling the actual we are having them boxes you guys build. are still packing yep. them but they're right. but they're going to arrive to you in not flat in form, their full state basically. yeah they used to come to us flat yeah. and, okay. and we would spend hours upon hours building them okay uh at higher gravity mm-hmm. and anyone who used to come to or still comes to north side would see us the doing that and off. the stacks yeah. would just constantly yeah. grow higher and higher yeah um but so that's one of the things that we did this year is we're having the box company build them for us to kind of awesome. expedite that process nice uh which is which is great but also i mean there's still so much other stuff that goes it takes up that much it. more space when it gets to you because they're already Sh- assembled shipping it here now gets a little Pricing. gets a little harder makes um, sense and stuff like that so okay. it, it is a little different but uh, overall, it's still the same process. And mm-hmm. like we were talking about earlier, um, figuring out what the list is going to be, I go through the calendar. Um, do you go day by day, or do you just say there are these three to five days that I, that I really want to make sure have Can I answer a very that specific Before fear? he does? Yeah, absolutely. What I is think, your truth I on think, that? I, I think Jason uh, is a very... Uh, I think Jason takes his business in a very professional and calculated way. I don't think uh, this beer vent box would be in any way short of that. Like, you you calculate uh, these things. Um, Am I wrong? Uh, yes, there's. A, <laughs> I am wrong. Oh, I love that. Oh, that, no, that, no, that, no, that no, there's no, some no, whimsical no. nature to it. The yes yeah. was not a yes, you're wrong. The yes is. But yes, you're right. Yeah. It is. Uh, yes, it's calculated. So I, I mean, I. It's in a spreadsheet. Um, of course it is. And yeah, everything lives in a spreadsheet in my world. Um, but so it's in a spreadsheet, and that calculation is not just. It's looking at cost and price because mm-hmm. one of the things I'm looking at is is trying to give customers value too. So um, the box costs 115 dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of people look at that price tag and be per like, box. Yeah, per it's box. bro. Seriously, yeah. worth every penny. Worth well, you haven't absolutely bought yours yet, every... apparently. Well, oh no, 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 I thought you meant the cardboard. No, the card. Oh, the no, 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 the, the assembled. Yeah, so, yeah no, 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 the okay, assembled. No, 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 no. Yeah. Okay, so the retail, yeah, yeah. the retail box, the retail yes, yes. for the beer vent counter. I knew is that. Dollars. I knew that. Which a lot of people look at and be like, "That's that's a lot." No, it's not. Uh, it 
It, and then it, once it you, is, but when you see, sorry, right. step on. And, yeah. and so in my calculation, I'm looking at, well, you know, what's my cost? We don't make a lot of margin on this. A lot of this for me and for higher gravity is it's got a marketing value to mm-hmm. it. Obviously, we can't lose money off of it um, or it wouldn't be worth doing. But uh, I'm not trying to make my entire year off this box or mm-hmm. anything like that. The margin is is basically state minimum retail margin, which if people are familiar with that um, in the industry, um, then you know it's not much. You, you don't make much off state but, minimum retail. But, so um, what it means is um, if you grab these beers individually off the shelf, that's what you pay. However, uh, you put together a box, you curate that, and right. you put it together. Right. There's uh, costs and labor involved in putting that together, as well as your time in talking to the breweries and, and curating the box itself. Right. Right. right, 100%. And then also, I mean, there are very few places that you can go and buy singles of anything, too. Mm-hmm. And so when we sell singles Correct. of anything... You're buying the four the six-packs in multitude. Th- those four and six-packs are set at state minimum retail. Those singles, because of how much effort goes into breaking them up, managing all that extra inventory, dealing with... And it's inevitable when you break down a six-pack you're going to be left with one that goes out of code. So you have mm-hmm. to mark those singles up slightly, and we don't mark them up much extra. But anyways, um, if you were to buy every single beer off of our shelf as a single beer and also buy the box, um, and we're this is figuring the box at our cost, not mm-hmm. with any kind of markup or margin on the box, um, the value of that box would be about $130. So you're buying... $15 in extra value. And when I talked about this with the Nardelli Gnome, he was like, you're fucking crazy. You shouldn't get a discount. It should be sold at a premium for all that effort that you guys put in. And, and my whole point in talking about this is like, I want more people to have the box. Mm-hmm. If I sold this for 130 or $145 or $150, less people less would, people would buy it. True. And so yeah. the marketing value goes down. And just honestly, I love seeing all the Facebook and Instagram and Twitter feedback from everyone. Oh, without a doubt, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a value. And unfortunately, you can't can't quantify the value. However, what you can do is you can say, all right, we we had all these interactions. We had all these likes. We had all these, you know, whatever it is, these uh, uh, posts, retweets. uh, We had all this because of this box. I mean, certainly there is a, um, a a marketing aspect to it. Yeah. Uh, which are kind of marketing for you. Yeah. Which which is, which is, uh, extremely hard to quantify in dollars. Uh, however, uh, you're, you're the guy, right? You, you, you are, um, one of the owners that understands that, you know, this is, uh, it, it, this is far beyond what we're bringing in, and right. so it's it, it certainly has a, a marketing aspect to it, which is fantastic because anybody else who's putting it on, let's say uh, their ABC, you know, box at a uh, big box retailer, they're only looking at that as a margin sort of aspect. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I, I don't want it. Even though that box from this, let's say wholesaler, this giant wholesaler that has uh, uh, advent calendar box of nothing but, uh, let's say German loggers. Uh, You're getting I, very specific now. Uh, it can only uh, be one place. That I, I, I love loggers. I don't want that box. I, I, I don't. I don't want it, and I don't need to seek it. Um, and uh, but they're putting that box purely from a, you know, P and L profit and loss statement. You know, uh, you know, mass box sort of standpoint. Um, I don't. It's, it's I don't, kind of it's kind of more of a gimmick for them. Like, hey, we're having this. And I don't, I don't, even I don't know. know. Maybe it's, it's not it's even a gimmick. So one, it's, it's, it's not a gimmick. Right, right. It, it's, the one that he's talking about sells out every year. People mm-hmm. buy it all the time. It is, sure, it is yeah, a yeah, pure. Sure. But, but and, the, and they're not making much margin. Same thing with us. Not, they don't make a, a ton of margin, but mm-hmm. no grocery store does. 
So it is purely a P&L play. Thing, where, yeah. Whereas yeah. for us, this is a, this is, yes, we are making profit off of it. Is it a lot of profit? Is it is the profit worth the amount of time I put in? It's, I take away my time out of the equation or add my time into <laughs> the profits and it, those profits are gone. Gone, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, and, and and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually, I, I get from where you're coming from is like your, your time is spent probably better uh, doing uh, or leading into something else. I, from a, uh, but, from, from but, a but it's, profit standpoint, sure. But, but it's, it's something that, like you said, quantifying that marketing aspect. And this is like, there's some great Freakonomics episodes. And I don't know if anyone who listens to this I've podcast to a couple episodes also listens it, to Freakonomics, but. but there's some great Freakonomics episodes about how much bullshit marketing is. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the most part, I agree with that and not completely because I don't think marketing works. I think a lot of marketing is too hard to quantify and you, you cannot exactly. see the full value of it. It's too hard to trace. The traceability is not there and you can never quantify what that marketing does for you. But even take away that marketing aspect and this is a marketing thing for us. Take that away. I just personally love interacting with everybody and seeing how much joy it brings, seeing how much people love this. I, I love that. And that's, I think the thing that when we're talking about, um, the difference between, uh, these German breweries wanting to, or whatever they are, put together this box. Well, let's even say some other, they're not local, but some other breweries that have put together a beer vent box where, Ten of the days aren't even beer. Socks. You get right. socks. You get a socks. bandana or a bandana. It's like, I, but th- this is this is a, a you're supporting local mm-hmm. and not just a, a supporting a local, uh, you know, beer bottle shop uh, curated place where you can come and have uh, fantastic margaritas, uh, Terramana Reposado. You can get. Uh, fantastic draft pours, but they're curating a a, a great a, a box, uh, you know, with talking to local beer retailers. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's also it, it's also uh, something that is you know just very much uh, 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 local in it. It it. It, it it hits man the 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 places around here and it it's not it's very much a community thing yes exactly it's community more so than yeah and exactly. I mean I have like four Thank you or for five finishing my thought because I got lost in our my notes thought. are the, our notes are the same I have like four or five different question conversation points all that that I want to try to figure out and see how quickly we can do it because I don't know how much longer you want to be here but do you kind of on the, the marketing side of things the bar have you I say it I, <laughs> fair <laughs> enough when talking about kind of the marketing aspect people resharing tweeting like the social media side of it do you notice an uptick at all in business during the beer event season or like slightly after once everyone's talking about higher gravity and the beer event box like have you noticed at least a temporary shift in well business or is it kind of no and again this is the hard okay. thing it's okay. a hard thing to trace we do always end up like our social media followings will go higher mm-hmm. during beer event season people will start to see stuff like that but mm-hmm. then like it's it's a bar we're a bar sure, sure january sucks by the time beer events over people are in dry january people aren't going out to bars Uh, people drank way too much at New Year's Eve and need a couple weeks off kind of thing. So, no, we don't see immediate return to the bar because Mm -hmm. somebody bought a beer rent calendar. That's fair. That's fair. Um, And and actually, uh, the people who buy beer event calendars generally come in less during those 25 days because they already have 25 days. Yeah, because they have beer, Um, right? Yeah. That makes sense. So from that aspect, it's not great for us. Because uh, some of those people won't come in to buy a pint because they ha- already have a beer. And sure. selling pints at a bar is better than selling a beer to go. Sure, um, sure. Most drinkers understand that, I think. But, um, again, for us, it is something that we love doing. We love seeing all the interactions and stuff. And, and I, I mean, I guess not to 
take away from this marketing discussion, but when we were originally starting to talk about this, um, you would ask how that list sort of builds out. Right, right. And for me, the first thing is styles. So I'm looking, I'm looking at styles and cost because I want to keep the cost of this thing down to make it appeal, uh, appeal to as many buyers mm -hmm. as we can get. The more people that can get their hands on this, the better, I think, because it is a really fun thing. Uh, it supports a lot of local and small breweries, mm -hmm. um, that kind of stuff. But um, I, and it's a question I get probably 50 times every year. I don't like IPAs. How many IPAs are going to be in this thing? The answer is two or three. Yeah. I just like. There's so many styles that. There, there will be, and I don't have the list in front of me and I can't remember because my brain's fried from. And I don't want to know, honestly. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't I wanna, want any of it. I want to say know, there's 20, spoiled, 20 different or 20 or 21 different sub styles represented. So that could mean there's three IPAs. Sure. But one's maybe one's, one's a New England. New England. Right. Yeah, but you, that's fair. You didn't, yeah. you didn't put a Schwartz beer in there, did oh, you? Oh, come on, Marco. I don't know what that style is. Thank oh, you. come on. Oh. I'm getting mad. There may or may not be. You're my dude. I'm returning my beer bed box. I'm uh, absolutely not. I don't know if they're... they're I'm absolutely not. Did you buy more than one, Julian? No. I, this year, I'm good. I only bought one. Last okay. year, I ended up with three, and it was... I not, will, not 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 all you, higher gravity, but I ended up with three different beer van box in it. I heard about this. It was way too much. It was so much beer. It was great, but I'm like, I I Would don't know how to. Would you like for me to return to. to you some of the beers that you gave me from the beer van boxes that um, I can't drink? How do people not from pick last these things year. up? I don't understand because aren't there still like one or two boxes sitting down at Northside? No, no. Oh, those are gone now. No. They were there for a while, and then oh my we, God, uh, yeah. Every time I look, I looked up, and I'm like, I don't understand this. I I don't, I don't either, and you know what? We sent out multiple emails. Being you like, guys do a great job of com of of communicating. They're available. Pick them up. Hey, right. if you haven't picked picked them up yet, you need to come get them. Oh, and I've sent you specific have this, you have emails this. like, hey, FYI, Two, this one, is your box. Specific, yeah, person number right. thirty six. Like, here's your box. There Anyways, you yeah. Um, so outside, good. So it starts with style. So I'm yes. trying to find a good style breakdown, and um, obviously every beer is from a separate brewery. So mm -hmm. I'm talking to 25 different breweries or their distributors, right? Um, from there, and then I'll build out the list that's based on style and based on uh, overall cost, and it's got to fit within my realm on both those metrics. Okay. And then so you're not gonna get five stouts in a row, and then well, like try to yeah. try to blend. And then through. once I have all of that, then I'm looking at a combination of, you know, what's going on in that month. So like, what are the mini holidays within December, mm -hmm. and do any of these beers really have fit. a correlation with that day? Um, like the cold beer for St. Nick's Day. Correct. That yeah, was yeah. awesome. I loved that so right. much. And yeah. some of those, so that cold beer we talked about with Urban Artifact mm -hmm. back in July. Like, hey, we should do something like this. Spawning so many so, other questions. That so we just, some, some, of, some of that planning with those holidays happens way up front, but I would say most of that, what day does each beer mm -hmm. go on happen more towards the end. Um, and then... So I'm looking at what days I can correlate things with, but also I don't want two stouts in a row or mm -hmm. I don't want two 15% beers in a row, that kind of thing. Right. So, um, so yeah. when you're, uh, like I said, I have like oh, so many other little questions firing off and I don't even know what order to ask them in. So this is going to be just random and let's try to kind of rapid fire some fire, of these just, just for time's sake. Do you have any lulls in the beer vent, the pre-beer vent season. So from the time you say, okay, let's let's start pre-orders. Let's order the boxes. Let's start talking to the breweries. And then it's planning what beers goes in what, go in what days, and then getting the material and the beer and then assembling the boxes. Do you really have any downtime between July and when you start handing boxes out to customers? I mean, I would say I would say July and October, November are like the crazy part. Mm -hmm. But August, September still have a lot going on. Right. Okay. Depending okay. on what those conversations with the breweries need to look like. So And that just kind of all ties I wouldn't, ties I wouldn't necessarily your call time and your yeah. cost in, in doing a I wouldn't necessarily okay. call it a lull because it depends on so many factors. But okay. there's so there's work going on in those those months mm -hmm. but it's not 
quite as crazy. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. And then are any, have any, so the very first year, I don't think you did custom beers from certain local Correct. breweries. Yeah. That started the second year or the third year? That that would have I been. I want to say third year. I want to say the year? third, yeah. So okay, because that's part, absolutely amazing, and I love that enough local breweries want to be a part of it. Right. And so what Julie is talking about, so this year we have five different breweries that have brewed a special beer that will only be found in cans in the calendar. Mm -hmm. Um, So these are special beers that were brewed specifically for this. Beer, right. Uh, Right. And then this year there's actually another seven beers that were brought from out of market breweries that you will only find cans of in the box as well nice. those Hell are not, yeah those are not specially brewed beers right they are just, just stuff that didn't get brought find. in other than for the calendar that's um, awesome so but those those specially brewed beers this is this is kind of where we're like playing this game now um we have to be able to sell enough mm-hmm. that it's worth it for the brewery to do this sure yeah yeah but we can't sell too many so like for example last year we did a beer from fibonacci they almost didn't make enough beer because their their batch size sure. is small. Sure. Um, that so, one was delicious. So if we favorites. get if we sell too many, if we were to up this number to a thousand, mm-hmm. Fibonacci could Couldn't play. Do. Yeah, they can't. Sure. They just sure. can't do this. Um, even Urban last year, we got one extra can. So oh, wow. that they their yield was pretty low on that cold beer, cold beer. So we almost didn't have enough to fill the box. Wow. We had one extra to play with. Um, so it, are there extras, to, like at least a few extras to try to factor in for well, so, random accidents yeah. during, so one you know the, what I mean? One like, of yeah. the things, yeah. like yesterday I spent a couple hours taking off the pack techs of some of the beers that we got in. And I had three of them explode in my face oh, as I'm God, pulling off yeah. the pack techs. Yeah. So we do try to work with the distributors and breweries to send us some extra stuff. At least 5%, ec- whatever, whatever give, that number one is. Extra to, case. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So we do have stuff like that, and that's lessons that we've learned. Because last year we had a couple of breweries that were sending special out of market beers, mm-hmm. where they only sent twenty five cases. And, You're going, my God! As, I hope to God nothing right. happens to a single one of yeah. these. Yeah, yeah. And luckily, like with a couple of those, it was like the pack tech broke, and I reserve one of these boxes for myself so I can play along with all the customers and mm-hmm. stuff too. I know the surprise is gone, but the beer is still really sure. good. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I was like, okay, well, that beer, I guess I'm not having in my calendar. And luckily, you know, a couple of those, Julia was nice enough to share. Yeah, absolutely. Or at least offered a share with me. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we have to factor in. Quit turning me down when I that. say, hey, I want you to experience this too. Yeah. Because there yeah. are one or two that you're like, nope, I'm not doing it. This is your <laughs> beer. And I'm like, we will share all of this stuff because that is part of what this is. Right, right. Part but, of what makes it such an amazing event i mean it really is the whole month is is an absolutely phenomenal event for the cincinnati craft beer community with these boxes i love it it really is and uh that's uh truly awesome uh to hear uh about how this comes together for you guys Mm and the other thing i think it's cool i mean you two guys have a, a friendship and uh i like to call you my friend uh jason as well uh but i just annoyed the hell out of them with my you, beer you guys posts and know like, each other longer and uh to well, be able to and we know each other because of beer vent. it right. really was it really yeah. was like i know that when i first met you and Allie, it was because my sister had mentioned oh there's this new bottle shop at north side cool well then my boyfriend was like oh i actually work with someone whose husband is one of the owners your wife and yep. it's like well now we absolutely need to go down there and make sure we're supporting you know everything there but it really was beer vent that was just that elevating factor of right and we had we had like met before in the sure, bar but sure, like yeah. until you started posting all the stuff about beer vent on facebook that's not we we hadn't really talked before that right so, right and i i think for a lot of people it's made a lot of those connections within the, within the cincinnati beer groups and stuff like that because mm-hmm. um, i know like there, I mean, I, without that, you wouldn't have this. Podcast, I, we yeah. wouldn't. Yeah, it's true. We, yeah, so that's true. Hey, yeah. We wouldn't have connected over this yeah. podcast. Yeah. I mean, uh, without a doubt. Uh, that's awesome. Without Julia being, you know, uh, that out there and, and facing that way, it, it, 
uh, wouldn't fun. have wouldn't have prompted me to say that lady knows craft beer. I need to, you know, uh, we need to be talk friends. to her. We need, we need to be friends. friends, and we need to talk about uh, this uh, thing that uh, I have an idea about. So. Yep. Yep. She's been downhill craft from beer. there. She knows music. You guys are good. Do what right? I can. Yeah. I don't know all the music. There are a couple songs that I mispicked, but hopefully. Why did you mispick? There was one beer from, I mean, it was last year's box, so everyone, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone anymore, but oh, the high the, G. Uh, the high G. Oh. You were like, you should know what song this is. And I'm like, I thought about, was it Drunk Driving? That you were like, this is the song you need to do for that. Because oh, no. it, oh, yeah. it mentioned it mentioned malt liquor and, and all that. Zigzags. And I'm just Maybe like, that's all we need. and I'm like, ah, shoot, I don't. You don't know that, that song. Might, you don't know Afro Man. I, 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 Afro Man. I knew yeah. it, but for not real. well enough to make the actual connection. I'm also I'm like, do I really want to do something where most of the song is about you know all this other stuff? I'm just like, I spent about a maybe year and this, a half. I don't. But then again, I started garage, off last year with Brothers. Ariana Grande, which everyone's like, what is this? And now my you know YouTube algorithm is messed up because it's crazy. My you know, wife uh, side to side. I still think uh, that's one of my favorite ones from last year that I, I and my friend. I had well. a. Um, I live in Louisiana, so we don't have basements in Louisiana. So I had a it's garage. A it's probably good. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had a uh, garage, and I had uh, weight set, so I was clanging and banging with my friends and uh, the stereo, and we would just put Afro Man. By the way, on tape at that point. <laughs> Not eight track. Uh, come on, yeah, man. It was, it was on uh, on tape. Uh, and then my wife would come out uh, and just chill and hang out but uh we were clanging and banging nice. you know working out uh in the uh garage but afro man yeah there we go so i have one other question and one other suggestion comment whatever for this year's beer event box will you too late by the way i know but, well anyway. no no, no. It's, it has nothing to do with the beer okay very good and this is an if because i don't want anything spoiled but if you do any extras in the box, gift cards, whatever, will you tape them to the beers for that day so that they don't get kind of like tucked into the sides and people have absolutely no idea that they're there? No. Because there were a few, no, okay, that's fair. <laughs> that That's fair. That's understandable. And one of the things that I love the most about the beer event box are the, and I don't even know what you want to call them, the prank days, the the joke beers or the jo- you, the day where there is something in the box that does not fit with the rest of the idea of the box. You guys always make up for it like the day before, the day after. Where did that idea come from? And have you gotten more positive feedback about those days than the negative? You know, I think one of the, the first years was like there was a... Was it a high life? It's a great I way to, think. You know what I mean? Like it, it's a great question uh, because you don't you don't. And there ask, may not be one this year. I have you don't no ask idea. Specifically but no, no, about no, this I don't know. No, 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 no. In the talk past, talk about the past right. and the the. I don't want to. I don't want to know that. anything about that. these years. As much as I'm like, I want to help you guys with the box. I don't want to know what goes into it. So I'm not offering my help with putting together the boxes. You guys can just suffer through that on your own. But knowing what I know about the past boxes and how much fun certain days were for yeah, those. Yeah, good, good, good question. How, how did that come about? And, yeah. um, you know, what, uh, you know. And, what, and have you gotten, or, or did you get, I guess I'll say, because saying have yeah, you feedback. Is, yeah, feedback from that. Good. Did you feel like more people tended to appreciate the, the again, I don't know what word you want to use, the joke, the one-off, the the discrepancy with those specific days or was the feedback more positive once people got to the next day, the next few days and realized they're having just and as much the other fun thing with this is, as we are. To keep in mind, anybody who follows any of these groups is probably a mem- member of more than one group. And uh, they had a box in the past that uh, seemed like all just pranks. Uh, so they weren't unfortunately they, they weren't prank. A prank eh. is like when you do it on purpose. Yes. Yeah. They, they were all just misses. People. They were they were trying to get rid of old beer. Yes. Is what was, was terrible. Doing. Yes. That's terrible. Um, and as a uh, so hold on wait a minute. Anything's terrible. We get uh, Charles Barkley come up here. Uh, I remember those beer boxes and those beer boxes was so terrible. 
It was like my golf game 10 years ago, <laughs> and those were terrible. And I just, I'm not happy about those establishment that put that beer bank boxes out. Uh, but that is not what you're going to get from high gravity. As much like my golf game has improved, high gravity is much better than my golf game. And thank you to Jason for allowing me to be here. And I truly thank you as a gracious host. And maybe you and I can get out and uh, hit some balls at Top Golf because I'm not going to get on the course with you because you look like a very athletic person. And even though I could uh, post you up and I could dunk on you on an eight <laughs> foot rim, no doubt about it, uh, we could maybe just go to Top Golf, have some beers, and enjoy, you know. Uh, you seem like a very, very fun person to be around, so we can maybe do that sometime. That is the longest that's <laughs> terrible that we have ever had I don't, on he, this. He didn't crack up. No, all. no. <laughs> that's amazing. I that's love a, it. That's impressive. To be able to hold a straight face for that long doing that is... So in, in chess yeah. boxes, and maybe you don't even want to talk about it, but pass boxes... I don't even know been, what we were talking about anymore. The, the, the all fun... Like Oh, the fun, yes. like uh, yeah, yeah, prank okay. joke, whatever days where it's a beer that you just do not expect to be in this box with the quality of what you've gotten in previous days. Well, so which is always I don't, I don't know it. what started that. I don't know why. I think the first year we did it, we were like, you know what? We should put a high life in there or something. I, I can't even remember mm -hmm. what the first prank was because the second prank was the Smirnoff ice. So we iced Well, you had the two boxes Yeah, that you year. iced somebody. Yeah, Didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. yeah, the first year was the high life because the that was the day I remember, was, yeah. I remember that post because I was having like the worst day in the world. Yeah. I got him. I'm like, I get to pick out a beer event beer. This well, is going to be awesome. This is going to make my day so much better. And it's a fucking high life. And I'm like, right. you know what? This is just funny. You know, what? Love life is life. so much fun. But when you look at all the beers that you've gotten previous and you're looking at, and that still sounds wrong, but it was, it was perfect. There's, That's all I'm going to say. It it's was, not, it's it not was crap, perfect. but getting it is, is cool. I yeah, mean, yeah. It's, it's fine. It's good. I don't want to get into the definition of craft and anything. No, 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 and there's a very good chance that we were just like, well, we ran out of money and we have another day. But I don't think that's the case because we did do two extra, two beers on right, the next Right, there was day. two beers yeah. on the next one, yeah. So, yeah. so I don't, I'm not sure what prompted it, but people were either like loving it. They were like, oh, that was hilarious. You got me. Or we had multiple Instagram messages, emails where people were like, what the fuck? Do they even wait I, till the next day to and go? At the, and at that, okay. well, that year the high life was sitting on top. Oh, that's right. That's the, right. It then, was. It was the was, double. Yeah, yeah, was yeah. A, uh, it was it like Cafe it Death was. or something like that? It was under it. Something like a I, really good barrel aged. I have it in on, a notepad yeah. file on my uh, computer at home. Do you really? I do. So the, seriously, I, I do. I do too. Hey. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's, I know you. It's do. not an Excel sheet, right? Right. It's um, not an ex That's it's not how you live by it's these It's not a spreadsheet, yeah. sheet, well, but it make is sure at least a list. It hasn't of... shown up in years past because we don't want to repeat beers. But, Which, um, that's cool. I wasn't yeah. aware of that. So yes. there's no high... Uh, spoiler alert. No, no high, high life. No high life this year. That could or, be the trick, though. Is that exactly. Just I was just going to say, oh, or he's like, is well, there? Well, hold on. Uh, um, uh, no. I might have just or led you down a path. Anyway, but so... We and a small bottle of Campari so you can spaghetti your own highlight. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, hey, dope. Oh, hey, that'd be so oh. dope. It's, anyway. it's, too, it's too bad we're not allowed to sell liquor retail or there would be Malort in there. Oh, God. That would, oh. <laughs> that would be so amazing. But, but nobody need none. But we, we had people legitimately angry about the highlight in the box. And at that time, the first box was 90 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was cheaper than it is now. And people were like, I paid fucking $90 for this. And you give me a high life in the box. Yeah, but okay. we also gave yeah. you and then a we, second. We always yeah. responded back. Did you look underneath? And they would be like, oh, shit, I'm sorry. 
and and we had fun with that. So then yeah. the next year we did the the Smirnoff ice. So like we iced one, the, I think the premium was the ice, and the standard box was a PBR. A PBR, a Bush Light, mm-hmm. or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. do love Bush Light. Was like one of my college beers. So it's awesome. I do love a good Bush. Uh, uh, yeah, who like, doesn't love Bush? Use <laughs> right? code. Well, some people use code gnome at manscaped.com if you're not a Bush fan. Okay, very yeah. good. There we go. Anyway, sorry. Uh, Continue. <laughs> so, so we we did that. You for, get it? It was a. And never mind. Let's go. Just, no, no, no. We're, no we're, let's go. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't kill it. For, for yeah. no. So he's a smart guy, by the way. I, Very. I don't know what the prank's going to be this year, or if there will be a prank. No, okay. you do. Okay. I mean, stop. Or it. there could be a prank. No. Well, stop what it. I love. Don't say I don't know. You're the person. You know. who I do these know. Things. I do but know. but I don't want to know. So him saying he's not sure helps. No, me correct. I mean, it's like I'm I, not going to tell. Here. Straight faced. Nothing's a prank this year. There we go. For all the people on the live stream. <laughs> straight faced. Deadpan. Yeah. Uh, I, I but, will good say job. that I. Great job, sir. <laughs> I, could, I didn't hold it for 30 seconds as Doesn't matter. Earl Sparkly. They, but they don't know that. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. 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 I do love how last year, High G was such a good beer, but also it was... Oh, it was super it, dope. But it was a style that people are going... Like, I did too. I'm like, this is, a, this is a style that could this be the prank? If there was even one in the box? Or is this just... That was a good a beer. A good beer. Like, it was, it was, was, a good it was beer. such an... I don't care. I don't even want to call it a red herring, but that was such a cool beer and style to have in the box that people that have gotten them in the past years, it made them think. Like, yeah, I mean, shout out to producer Ben, because that was his idea. That's awesome. Um, and he, Weren't you guys doing Edward Forty Hands when you guys came up with that? Uh, I, Something like that? We used to do Close Edward enough Forty to Hands it. a lot. So I love malt liquor, and as soon as Bro. He, he, he came You up, and Ben met? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, me and Ben have never done Edward Forty Hands together, but in college, in. we did that a lot. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, post-college, we did that a lot. We need to get uh, Jason and, and Ben Metz together and Edward Forty Hands. Yeah. yeah. I don't oh, yeah. think I could do it again, but... Uh, Edward, a, <laughs> Edward, 24 hands. We'll 24 hands. We'll yeah, yeah. 80 fine. ounces is a lot of volume. It's fine. It's um, but when... Because he came up to me and he was like, hey... I have an idea. I don't think you're going to like it, but I was thinking that we could brew a malt liquor, and I was like, fuck yes, let's go. Because that was when he was still yeah. at West Side, right? He was still at West Side. Okay, yeah. And, and he was like, really? I was like, yeah. He's like, this yeah. is like my dream. And I was like, I had never Dude. brewed a malt liquor before. I didn't know how to brew a malt liquor. So yeah. it was a cool experience being able to brew that. Also, it was like a lot of nostalgia for me. Mm. And then it was a damn good malt liquor. It was so excellent. Like, yeah. Yeah. My it was so God, good. it was so good. I mean, my, uh, I, I won't, t- I won't tell. I mean, cause, but anyways, long story short, I did tell in the previous, um, uh, truth beer pod that, I mean, I was grandfathered into mm. legally drinking in 18. Uh, I had a lot of malt liquor uh, yeah. around 18 years old. I won't tell you what my friends and I would do around that, uh, but yeah, I had a lot of malt liquor. Uh, we we used awesome. to. There was a, and I don't know if either of you would ever know, but I grew up on the east side, so we're we like guns. Uh, <laughs> there was there was a show called Top so, Shop. So so you've been you, so you lived so east side. You were back to being west side almost. Uh, that's. Mm. Eh? I don't know. This might be. An if, if you go, so, if you go so far east side, boy, you go back to being a west sider. I disagree. Of. There's no. Okay, no. that's fair. No, but it, this that, that guns. was that was a yeah. very right. long, Hit very it. old episode of Shift Beers ago where that came up. Where I, if you go so far east, you basically become west again. It, but if west is not Ohio anymore and it's Indiana, then yes. Oh. But if we're talking about West Side Cincinnati, I think there's so many differences still. Anyway, it's true. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. There anyway. was a show called Top Shop. Okay. And it was okay. a uh, shooting competition, uh, like a reality series shooting competition. So we used to, and I used to travel with a bunch of people for work mm-hmm. down to Jacksonville, and we would all just Florida. Yes. Yeah. 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 Love Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, it was great. We we used to stay at the Sawgrass Marriott Ponte Vedra, and so we would live there for six to ten weeks twice a year um and it was awesome but we would all sit there on thursdays or wednesdays whatever day top shot came out but we would 
because it was a shooting show and malt liquor is almost always named after gun stuff. True. We would go out and get a bunch of 40s and we'd play Edward 40 hands and eat Slim Jims. I don't know where the Slim Jims <laughs> Wow. Are. All right. Why we watched well, it. Was, it was still, at the check out of the gas station. It was just, it was, yeah, it was still right getting there. sustenance. I, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Protein. So, yeah. so like, Simple and, carbs. and we played in college before that just because college kids do stuff like that. Yeah. But I fell in love with 40. I almost moved to Jacksonville. Because of Jacksonville's a great place. Not yeah. the city itself, but the beaches are awesome. Yeah. I, 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 my, my wife and I, I mean, we, like, I, I spent two weeks. Uh, trying to convince her to move to Jacksonville? No, I spent two weeks saying we're moving to Jacksonville trying to find a place. And then, you know, shit changed. But anyways. Yeah, there's yeah. a place That's called awesome. Gators down there. They, they, like, toss the wings in the sauce. And then they retoss them. And that's like oh. their thing. The retoss. Oh. And I'm in. They're great. Did you ever go to Sweet Tomatoes down there? Probably. It just was a place with uh, soup and salad. Maybe not. Whatever. But I don't like soup. Does Jason look like a salad guy to you? I do like salad. I don't. I'm, I'm not a I'm soup kidding. guy. I just don't yeah, understand it. It, was, it had right. it had <laughs> delicious soup and salad. But anyway, that's that's fair. Not a big deal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For, like we said in the beginning, allowing us to use your space to do our podcast. For sure. For having an absolutely ridiculously amazing bottle shop. For putting together Beer Event, which is so many, at at least six, seven hundred people's favorite season of the year in Cincinnati. Multiple people. Multiple, multiple people. Is there anything, plug stuff, tell people where to find higher gravity, social media, anything you want to plug keep shouting out beer event calendar since there's still at least one left there's one at you least you could left. have the yeah, last you could one have the last one if you go to and i'm gonna steal this from jason higher gravity crafthouse.com h-a-u-s plug your shit yeah let I've, people know everything about this place about you about whatever you want to have people know and we'll try to spread the word to our tens of listeners yeah yeah, 100%. I mean, all so, of them. So, beer vent, go get your beer vent calendars mm-hmm. before they sell out. I mm-hmm. talk about this every year. I always sell out or we sell out of the beer vent calendars. And then I get emails like, oh, I forgot about the beer vent calendar. Can you make me a special one? And I don't want to do it. I, I like People it. say, can you make me a special yes, one? Yes, and we do every year because I stress out. Are you out. serious? I stress out and I oh, do no. personalize beer vent calendars and it's, I feel it's bad not it's it. not the actual beer vent it's, calendar it's, it's something different all, so i yeah, want to so clarify we, so that i don't to, want i don't want people to hear that's you say so that that's so brazen i, think, I mean uh, what what are you talking can you yeah. make me a special one well but if you think well, about it because they want a beer vent calendar for somebody and most which, ni- 99% of the time <coughs> not for them they want a special present to give to somebody okay, and they okay, say okay, that. like can you make something they're like i don't even care if it's not the same but can you please put okay, something together? Okay, I got you. I got you. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so I, I put them saying, together look. because I, I feel bad and I don't want anyone to miss out on anything. So it's another level of stress for me. But I want to make sure that people it. understand so, yeah. if it's after everything sells out, because it will sell out. If it is after there are no more beer vent, like official beer Correct. vent calendars, and if you reach out to Higher Gravity and say, can you make me one? It will not be the beer vent be the calendar. Same. That is purchased between Correct. July and you, whenever you they sell not gonna, I just want to make sure that you're not going to be able to. That. You, although you can identify uh, with the fact that everybody is pulling out a, a unique beer, you are not pulling out necessarily the there same. Will, there will be beers. at least twelve beers that will not be Correct. the same as everybody. Okay, else. Yeah. I, I just want to make sure those, that yeah. all of those unique beers yeah. that are brewed specifically for it, we do not have enough mm-hmm. other than for those beer event calendars and all of the ones that we brought. Out of out of state or mm-hmm. out of market, and I just want to make sure that people understand that because yep. I have a feeling that you're going to have one or two people that said, "Well, I heard on that podcast that they could still make me one." It's like no, no. And, and to be honest, they this, can this make year, you a because of the a way the mix, boxes basically it's a miss pack, Mi- uh, like yeah, a sure. mix pack. It's yeah. not a beer vent. It would be a 25 mix pack, but this yeah. year we do not even have extra boxes we, we don't go. have extra okay. cardboard so okay. get, there you get go. your order in okay uh higher gravity crafthouse.com and that's the german house h-a-u-s mm-hmm. because some jackass already had the domain for higher gravity.com Ooh. um so do that Stop buy it paying. follow us on social media facebook instagram that's all some sort of 
uh, version of Higher Gravity mm-hmm. or HG Summit HG Park. HG Park, yep. Um, and, and come visit us. Uh, Summit Park is the newest location, but the Northside location is kind of always going to be home for us. Even my wife, uh, we, we spent a lot of time improving the Summit Park space to try and make it more comfortable, try and make it more streamlined. And my wife, the, one of the first things she said when she came in here, she was like, well, Northside just feels like home because that's where we were. Like we hand built all the furniture mm-hmm. and you just side. built some new like um, benches. And yes, I didn't well you? I yeah. hand built the bench. Well, he hand built the bench. Well, no, well, but didn't you just well, do but some? We built a new yeah, one yeah, yeah. in in Northside. For, yeah, recently. That's all I was saying. He so, built this table that we're sitting I, at. I did build the table. and and the chairs. He the, blew well, the glass for the windows. The chair. My the, the God. chairs. I think I, I helped did, him with some of these. I did probably screw the seat onto this chair. I, th- I think I helped you with these. You, this entire place was handcrafted yeah. by Jason, Nick, Marco. No. Well, that's just no? Not, a, not a no. I, I well, you screwed said some you, okay, okay. chairs together. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm I, trying no. to throw so you Marco did, here. Marco did help with that. But, um, yeah, come visit us at either space. Both spaces, we are but, constantly changing our inventory. Always new beers on tap and cans. Uh, full beer caves in both places. So even if you're not sticking around for pint, 99% cold beer. I think Kroger, the only thing that's not cold that you're buying to Kroger take home. Kroger doesn't need your money from a case of Bud Light. We do. No. So stop by. Well, but mm-hmm. the other that. thing is, too, is that just because Summit Park is a park doesn't mean that it shuts Dora. down. Correct. Uh, they've got Dora. And then talk to us about uh, some of the cool, exciting things coming up uh, for the winter months uh, here at Summit Park. Yeah. The, I mean, this this park and, you know, part of the reason we, we chose this place as our, our next spot, other than the fact that I live in Blue Ash and wanted to have my own little watering hole close by. But um, and that's not why I chose it. But uh, we actually moved here after we had planned to come mm-hmm. here. But um, the this this park is awesome. There's always stuff going on, even in the dead of winter. Um, when most people would think nothing's going on. They, they build set a, up an ice skating they, rink. They build yeah, an ice rink yeah. out there. They've got music going all, all the Can time. Can I hold a margarita in my hand while skating around? If it's in a door cup, yeah. Hell yeah. Actually, I don't, yeah. I don't know if they'll let you on the ice rink. Oh, you can well, bring it. can't be on the ice rink, but, but you, you can bring be, it next to the ice rink. You can bring it next to the ice rink. Right. Yeah. And, and you may be able to bring it on the ice. I don't know. Okay. So don't quote okay. me on that. It's our but now. lots of lots of fun activities going on mm-hmm. around here. We do, and one of the things that I freaking love every four years, we're a sports bar here, so Bengals games are always on. Uh, I'm a Vikings fan, so I try to get Vikings on whenever I can. We don't have Sunday ticket, but that's going to be changing next year. Uh, Liverpool bar, but we'll put any soccer game on that we can get. So mm-hmm. if you like soccer, come on in. And every four years... It's World, World Cup, Cup time, Hell so yeah. starting November twentieth. Dude, will have are you serious? Are you going to be open, open at like at two in the morning? Yeah. No. So, so we are, and and granted, I mean, if we get a big enough group of people looking to have games, we can open for more games. Just reach out to us. Mo- on our most website. of the U.S. But, games, but all happen. the all the U.S. games are at two o'clock. Okay. Right. We will Perfect. be open for every U.S. men's national team game. So if we get out of our group stage whatever i don't care what time us is playing i will be here at the bar nice uh it will be open and then we'll also be opening a little early for the first game which is guitar mm-hmm. i can't remember who they're playing it's but cutter they, but whatever. cutter guitar whatever yeah. uh it doesn't matter is it no i don't know uh but that game is at 11 a.m on saturday november 20th we will open early for that game so, so what about, as you're recovering from your hangover from beer, booze, bonks, boing, spinks, oh yeah, come to Higher Gravity Summit Park. Is it both locations? And just Summit Park. Bo- uh, both locations will be open. Go to uh, one of the Higher Gravity yeah. locations and get your hair of the dog and uh, watch uh, some soccer. And watch some soccer. And okay. also, what are the uh, day before Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, and day after Thanksgiving hours? Yes. Um, day before Thanksgiving will be regular hours. Uh, Thanksgiving trying to figure out we don't like to have our staff work on holidays like that but generally nick and or i will work some kind of hours so follow us on social media and we'll post about it most likely nick will probably be working down in the north side on thanksgiving and i'll be working up here on thanksgiving at least for a few hours because everyone either you either need to take 
some alcohol to your family's house. Or you need to drink some to recover from being Or you need to drink some house. after going to your For family's sure. house. For sure. Yes. So yes. we'll be here at some point. Um, like I said, check our social media for hours. And the most up-to-date is always Google. Just search Higher Gravity or Higher Gravity Summit Park on Google. Are you still doing curbside pickup? I know that was a thing uh, we, COVID, we can, or is that still? We can always do curbside pickup, okay. and we still okay. do some deliveries as well, which okay. can all be done on our website. Nice. Um, yeah. All right. And, and Christmas, one of us will be here on Christmas Eve. Christmas Day will be closed. All right. Uh, Last yeah. question that I have for you, and this is the hypothetical, so no pressure third location where would you love to see that be um you have north side you have summit park if a third location ever happened i just got back where from, would you love i just to got have. back from costa rica and so I, costa rica. Would, I would like it to be there <laughs> there so, we go hell yeah <laughs> you're right on the beach in sounds, Costa. Yeah. sounds perfect well when you open up that location in costa rica yeah <laughs> Eventually, we will have enough money from donations we can, we to can go talk down about, there. We can talk about uh, full food restaurant. <laughs> we can talk about uh, a brewery if you want, or just bottle shop. I mean, just let me know. I mean, I, we I can, don't know what the laws are, but I'm we can, pretty sure we can do whatever we want. Whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Marco will we be can, down there in yeah, a heartbeat. It's just yeah. Well, yeah, Jason, my wife and I, yeah, ready. It's good. <laughs> It'll be great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's let's cheers our cheers. completely not empty glasses of tequila and margaritas and we will be back here next tuesday as always and anytime you want to swing by steal a mic and we'd love to keep talking to you absolutely thanks for having me we'll see you guys soon